OK, friends, it's time to get started on replacing our rear brakes. One of the first things you want to do is safely raise and support the rear of the vehicle so the wheels off the ground. The next thing we're going to do is remove all six of our 19 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. With the wheel out of the way, we have a nice clear view of our brake rotor and where our brake pads are going to be located. Now, if your rotor looks like ours, rusted, I'm going to continue on with some penetrant along the center hub area and along each of the studs. Let it sit and we'll start removing the caliper. Once you have your penetrant on there, let's continue on to the back side of the caliper. You're going to be looking for two 13 millimeter headed bolts. We'll remove each of those mounting bolts and then the caliper from the bracket. Now that we have those off of there, let's go ahead and remove the caliper and take a close look at the piston. When you're looking at this, what we're trying to see if it looks like the boot looks like it's torn, worn, or damaged in any way. Also, if you happen to see any fluid coming out around this area, generally that means you have a bad steel on your caliper and you have to replace it. This one looks fine, so we'll set it aside for now. Next, let's remove each of our brake pads from the brake caliper. It's common to have to use a prying device. Go ahead and slide it in there. Once you have your pads out of there, you want to give them a close inspection. Essentially, I just want to make sure it doesn't look like it's worn at an angle. If it's worn at an angle, there's a possibility there could be an issue with a caliper slider or even the pads were stuck in the bracket. Either way, you want to make sure you correct it before you go ahead and put in the brand new parts. These look fine. Now with the pads out of the way, we're going to continue on to removing our two 18 millimeter headed caliper bracket bolts. These are the bolts that hold the bracket to the rear differential. I'll go ahead and remove the first one, give it a close inspection, and then go ahead and put it back in a couple of threads. Now we can remove our second bolt. Grab onto that bracket and remove your final bolt there. We'll set our bracket aside. Now let's continue back up to the caliper itself. We're going to make sure we push in the caliper piston as far as it can go. Essentially, I want to make sure it's not bound up inside. To push back the piston, you can use one of two tools. Either one of these or even one of these. Whatever's your preference. What we're watching for is the caliper piston to go in as far as possible into the caliper. Go ahead and remove my tool. Now let's have a look at the piston. Make sure it's in as far as it can go. Assuming you still don't see any fluid leak and it pressed in as it should, we can continue on to removing our rotor from the rear axle. To remove the rotor, generally you can just use a hammer. As I'm using the hammer, I'm going to be extremely careful not to damage any of my lug studs. Once it's broken free, typically you can just try to spin it and pull it off at the same time. It should want to work its way off. 
if it feels though it's bound up and does not want to slide off, generally it's because there is e-brake shoes or emergency brake shoes on the inside of this area. If that's the case, just make your way to the back side of the backing plate, find the adjustment hole, and loosen the adjustment for the emergency brake shoes. Now that we have the rotor off of there, we're going to take a close look at the emergency brake shoes. That's this area that comes along here. Just like a brake pad, it has pad material that's attached to the metal aspect of the shoe. You want to make sure that the pad still has plenty of meat on it. At least two thirty seconds of an inch is generally okay. The next thing I like to do is lubricate this area here. This is the emergency brake actuator. So I'll just use some penetrant in this area, let it sit, and then we'll continue with our cleaning process. Before we go ahead and clean any of this down with some parts cleaner, let's sand down the axle area where the brand new rotor is going to sit. It's important to make sure you don't have any rust or debris in that area, otherwise you're going to find that you have a brake pulsation. Once you have that sanded down, continue on with a wire brush in between your studs and the hub. Now let's continue on with some parts cleaner and clean the entire area. Once you have everything cleaned, we're going to start looking for the e-brake shoe adjustment. That's this area right here. For the driver's side, you're going to find it down low. On the passenger side, it'll be up along the top. Now this is the adjustment to either contract or expand the emergency brake shoes as necessary for your emergency brake adjustment. To access this, generally you'd want to come from the back of the backing plate, pop out the rubber boot that's just behind this area, and then you can come in with a small flathead screwdriver and generally turn it one direction or the other to make an adjustment. Now with that said, I'm going to continue on with some penetrant on the adjuster just so I can make sure that it flows easily. Now let's move along to some copper never sees on the mating surface of our axle where that brand new rotor is going to sit. Now once you've done that, make sure you didn't get any on your emergency brake shoes. Now we can go ahead and put it on our brand new rotor. Slide it right on over all those lug studs and press it in. Now generally people will want to clean down the braking surface of their brand new rotors. Our rotors come with a special protectant on it that you do not need to clean off. Just go ahead and put it right on here. Just go ahead and slide it on and then we're going to use a lug nut to hold it in position. Now let's continue on to cleaning up our caliper bracket. On the bracket, you're going to find that you have metallic tins. We need to remove those carefully without cutting yourself. Just go ahead and use a pry bar and pop them right off. Give them a close inspection, set them aside for recycling. You've got some brand new ones. Once you have those off, we're going to continue on to each of our caliper slider pins. All you have to do is grab onto the slider pin, you'll notice that the boot starts coming out with it. We need to make sure that the boot comes unattached from the slider pin so we do not tear it. I'll just gently separate this with a small screwdriver. Let's wipe down that slider pin. The next thing you want to do is give your slider pins a close inspection. This area right here needs to be smooth. That's how it flows back and forth inside the caliper. If it's rusted and rotted or pitted in any way, you're going to want to make sure you take care of that. Other than that, you can move all the way up to this area. Right where my index finger and my thumb was, you can tell that there's a little groove in this area. That's where the end of the boot needs to sit. If there's rust or rot inside there, moisture or debris could make its way in and seize up the slider pin, which overall would be very bad. This slider pin is in very good condition, in exception of this area. So, I'm going to clean down the entire thing and I'll use a wire wheel to clean up any rust in this area. 
Once this one's done, we'll do the exact same thing to the other. I went ahead and I cleaned up both of my caliper slider pins. Double checked, and they're both in great condition. At this point, I'm going to set them aside, and I will lubricate them a little later. The next thing I usually do is remove the caliper slider boots from the caliper bracket. But on this particular application, this is a one-time use. Essentially, if I try to pry this out of here, it's going to be damaged to the point that you cannot reinstall it. If you do not have new caliper slider boots, do not try to take these out. It's going to damage them, and you're going to have to replace them with new ones. The next thing we would want to do is clean out the inside of the slider port, all inside here. Typically, if this boot wasn't on here, you could use some parts cleaner and a bore brush to clean it out. Unfortunately for us, keeping the rubber in here, you do not want to use any type of parts cleaner because it's going to swell this up and it's going to be pretty much useless overall. So I'm just going to use a rag, I'll twist it, slide it in there, maybe even use a screwdriver with the rag to work it around. Get out as much of the debris and use grease inside this area and then replace it with new. Give that a quick inspection inside as much as you can see and then do the exact same thing on the other side. The next thing we want to do is clean up the areas where those caliper bracket tins were. Looking at this caliper bracket, you can see that it's extremely rusted in this area. By leaving this in here, there's the probability that your brand new pads are going to get stuck and that'll shorten the length of life of your brake pads, not to mention possible brake problems. We'll go ahead and sand down this area along here and inside each of the grooves on all four corners of the bracket. Once you have all four corners of the bracket where those tins are supposed to go cleaned up, we're going to continue on with our brush. Now you want to pay attention to the bracket itself. If there's any large rust flakes that look like they're ready to fall off, go ahead and get them off of there. You don't want anything falling into your brand new brakes. That's going to cause a noise and potentially brake problems. Now as I'm cleaning this, it's important to mention in between this area as well. This is the area where the rotor is going to be riding, so if there's any large chunks of anything in here or on the other side, it could potentially get caught in the brakes, as I mentioned before. Now in your brake kit, you're going to notice it came with a little packet of lubricant. That's high temperature molly grease. It's important to use a little bit of it along each of the areas that you went ahead and sanded down, essentially where each of those tins are. Once you have a thin amount on each of the four corners, continue on with your brand new tins. Looking at the tins, you can tell the way that the pads need to sit into it, down along this way. And on the side that has the bracket, you're going to have these locking tabs. It's important to note. Let's take the area that goes up against the bracket with the two inner locking tabs. We'll put those inner locking tabs inside this area and then squeeze this in. After you feel as though you have it in, just give it a little tug to make sure it's secure. It's going to move around a little bit, but essentially it can't slide around this way or it could potentially cause some braking issues. Now let's continue on with that high temperature molly grease and your caliper slider pins. We're going to lubricate the entire shaft of the slider pin and make our way all the way up into that groove that I had mentioned before. By getting it up into the groove, that's going to help keep moisture and debris out of the area so this will be able to flow freely for a long time. Let's go ahead and take that slider pin and we'll put it directly into the bracket. As I'm putting it in, I'm going to go ahead and twist it and that's going to make sure that the grease makes its way into the port as needed. Now I'm going to press it down. Once I press it down, the boot should slide into the groove on the slider pin and I'm going to give it a little wiggle in and out. I can tell that the boot does not want to slide off of the caliper slider pin, so that tells me I'm clear to move on to the next slider.
Go ahead and wipe down any of the excess grease in this area. Once the bracket's done, let's continue on to each of the mounting bolts that we had removed. We have the two larger bolts that holds the bracket to the axle, and then the two smaller caliper slider bolts. We're going to make sure that we clean off any of the debris or even thread locker that's on these, and then reapply red thread locker to each of them. Once all your bolts are cleaned and re-thread locked, let's continue on putting the bracket onto the vehicle. Before we put our brakes back together on this side, let's continue on by testing our emergency brake. For this, I'll just use a pry bar. I'm going to press directly up against the actuator on the back side here and up against one of the stud that comes out of the back of the differential. Now you can do this on the passenger or the driver's side. Like I said before, one's going to be located up high and one will be a little lower. Now when I do this, I'm gently going to pry and all I want to see is this actuator to move approximately a quarter of an inch to about half an inch. If it goes any further or I can just keep on pushing it for a long time, generally that means that the emergency brake is under adjusted. You're going to have to make your way to the adjuster, which as I mentioned on the driver's side, which would be located down here. You're going to have to adjust out those e-brake shoes. Until it gets to the point that it's properly adjusted, you can only move this a little bit, like I said, quarter inch to a half an inch. And when you go ahead and turn the rotor, you only hear a slight bit of drag, but you don't necessarily feel anything holding it back. If you have too much drag, that's even worse than not having enough. Too much drag is going to cause friction, that's going to cause things to heat up and expand, and you might notice that you have smoke coming from one of your wheels. Just keep that in mind. Now let's take our bracket and we're going to slide it back onto the rear differential. Start in both of those bracket bolts, bottom them out, and then we're going to torque each of these to 148 foot-pounds. Now let's go ahead and grab onto a pair of our rear brake pads. When you're grabbing a pair, you want to make sure that you grab one that does not have a wear indicator on it. The second one you grab does need to have a wear indicator on it. And it's important to make sure you position the wear indicator in the right area. Now on this vehicle, we're showing you to do the driver's side. So you want to make sure your inner pad has a wear indicator and it's facing down. So as the wheel's turning, if the wear indicator did end up hitting up against the rotor, if it was on there for a while and ended up breaking off, it's not going to break off and get jammed in between the pad and the rotor. That would be very bad overall. Slide that in there. If you have to use a hammer to force these in, more than likely you didn't clean the bracket well enough. Go ahead and take it back off and clean it up. These can move around freely, so I feel confident I cleaned the bracket properly. Now it's time to get back to the caliper itself and some of your high temperature molly grease. We're going to go along the piston on each of the calipers. We'll lubricate this area and then we'll also lubricate the backside of each of these ears. This is going to help with vibration dampening and noise reduction overall. Once that's lubricated, we'll go ahead and put this up here. Once you put it up, pay attention to the flex hose. You want to make, it, you want to make sure it's in a straight line and it's not twisted. If it looks like this, you're going to find that you have a braking issue. Slide this right on over those brake pads. Let's take those two caliper slider bolts. We'll start these in here. Once you have them bottomed out, torque each of these to 38 foot-pounds. Now what you'll notice when I'm holding the pliers is that I'm trying to hold the slider pin from spinning while I continue tightening the slider bolts.
All right, now the next thing you want to do is double check your work. You want to make sure you torqued everything that I said to torque and the flex hose is not twisted in any way. After that, continue on by removing your lug nut on here, put the wheel back on, start on all six of your lug nuts. Now let's go ahead and bottom out all of our lug nuts in a crisscross manner. We'll get the wheel safely back on the ground so we can torque them to manufacturer's specification. <laughs> Before we get the wheel back on the ground so we can torque each of the lug nuts, go ahead over to the other side of the vehicle and replace those brakes as well. Alright, so now that we have both side brakes done and the wheels back on the ground, let's go ahead and torque each of these lug nuts to 140 foot pounds. Torqued. Okay friends, now that we have all the wheels torqued, let's continue on by pumping up our brake pedal until it's nice and firm. Once you've done that, make your way under the hood to the master cylinder. You want to double check to make sure it's topped off with DOT3 brake fluid. You can see the maximum line. If it's low, just go ahead and bring it right up to that maximum. Close it off, close the hood, take it for a road test. Thanks for watching.